Hello everyone, Rachel Weaver here. I am a part of the faculty as well as the staff at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. I have been making um, several different series of videos and we're just starting a new one for the month of July called Lighthouse Talk Shop. And this month we um, asked all of you, uh, members of our Lighthouse community, to submit questions that you have for agents. Um, and then I will be um, meeting with a couple different agents throughout the month to pose those questions um, that you guys all ask through our socials. So um, today we have Sonali Chinjani with us from Folio Literary Management. Thanks for being here, I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, thank you for having me. So Sonali has been with Folio for about five years. She represents fiction as well as nonfiction. So I'm just gonna jump right in and ask you some of these questions. So yeah. the first one, I'm sure you get this a lot. Um, <clears throat> what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see in query letters? Yeah, um, so I think some of the obvious ones that you might guess are um, misspelling my name or the name of the agency or just kind of doing a general dear agent in which it's pretty clear that you might have copy and pasted your query letter, which we know you're doing, but <laughs> it's it's nice to know that you've, you know, um, done a bit of research and have a personal reason for reaching out to us. Um, there's also uh, queries that I receive, which are not in genres that I represent. So picture books or young adult or things like that. Um, so again, just really goes to the idea of doing your research. Um, but I would also say the, the less obvious um, things, and I wouldn't necessarily call these mistakes, but um, it, it, like most often the reason I'll pass on a query is just because it seems like a writer is reaching out to me too early before their manuscript is really ready. Um, and a couple of ways that I can get a sense of that from the query letter are first um, through the description of the project. So sometimes that description will be, um, you know, really long and rambling. It's not quite clear what the sort of overall thread or arc is, or it might just feel, you know, very short and kind of general, like, you know, this, this is a book about a girl who falls in love, in which case it, it, both of those are kind of signs of different things, but in some way, either that the manuscript, you don't quite have control over it yet. You don't quite know what the story is. Um, or that you know it it doesn't feel kind of special or specific enough. Maybe you need to drill down a little bit more deeply into the characters or the story. Um, and then the other sign is in the sample pages. Um, a lot of times the story will begin with exposition, um, you know, details about kind of where we are and what's happening, but it, it doesn't really feel like it's actually like the story has actually started or gotten underway yet. I don't really know who the character is or what they want, um, but you know, I might have a really great description of their backyard <laughs> setting me up. Um, so those are, yeah, those are probably the biggest things that I look for. And then um, a follow-up question to that is, um, is an initial pass from you always a hard no? Um, so meaning if I send you my book and you can kind of sense that it's not ready yet or it's not, you know, it needs more work, then if I go back and work with a professional editor and really develop the story, can I send it to you again? Or should we assume that, that an initial pass is a, is a sort of a hard no? Yeah, um, it's tricky. And I would say in general, I try not to be a monster and be open to revisions, especially if it's clear that you've, you know, put the hard work into it. Um, I would say it kind of depends on the stage at which I've passed on a project. So if I've passed on a query, um, it's, it's so difficult because like, you know, I get, I get so many queries into my inbox that unfortunately I can't respond to each one with personal feedback. So it might not be clear why I'm passing on it. Um, but sometimes it, it could just be that I've passed on something because the premise isn't quite right for me. Um, or I wasn't connecting to something about the narrative voice, which, you know, it, it could be great and it could be there. It's just something that's, you know, a better fit for another agent. Um, I would say if I request material, then I try to be pretty clear when I respond to it. If you know, if I think 
I have a clear vision for the project and, and for how it could be revised, I'll try to offer some feedback and say, you know, if, if you undertake a substantial revision, like I'd be very happy to take a look at another one. Um, there are other projects where, you know, it, it could just be something that came to me later as I was reading where I'm like, oh yeah, no, this, this one really isn't quite right for me for X, Y, Z reason. Um, and I'll try to offer some feedback. But yeah, I, I would say like substantial revisions, I'm usually pretty open to. Um, and I think when in doubt, reach out to me and I, I might just say, you know, sorry, I really do have to step aside on this one. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's just tricky because it's, you know, a balance of like wanting to, to um, have the time to, you know, read through kind of the new material and the new voices that keep coming into my inbox and not to sort of, you know, engage with something that I really just don't feel is, is quite right for me. Um, let's see, um, this one is in a different vein. Um, this Lighthouse member is wondering if you've ever worked with a sensitivity reader. Um, in your opinion, are sensitivity readers becoming more sought after in the publishing world? Yeah, um, so I personally have not worked with a sensitivity reader, but I know um, a couple of my colleagues have, and also some of my authors have just solicited um, a sensitivity reader on their own. I think you know, from my experience and understanding, I think they're most common in the young adult space, but they're becoming more and more, um, you know, there's a there's a growing awareness of them and, and the value that they provide in the adult fiction space as well. Um, and I personally think that they can be really great. Um, and if you are thinking about a sensitivity reader and kind of whatever space you're writing in, I, I think it can be pretty worthwhile. Um, just because, you know, there are so many communities that have such limited representation in in kind of books and in publishing that I think if their stories are told in a way that is inaccurate or inauthentic, it, it can be, you know, it can do real harm in sort of perpetuating false stereotypes of, about that community. So I think if you're going to kind of write, you know, um, outside of your experience, I think one, you should have a really good reason for doing it. A, a lot of times the answer is sometimes a just cause, which I don't think quite cuts it. Um, and two, you should really kind of put the work into doing, you know, the research to make the story right, um, that you get the story right. And and I think, you know, part of that is, is employing a sensitivity reader and sort of, you know, he hearing their take. And I think they can, from what I've heard from colleagues and, and clients, they can provide really valuable insights. Um, just kind of, you know, flagging blind spots, like things that you might not even have thought of or considered. And just like, I think in the same way of any edits, like whenever you get an outside read, it's like, oh, that's not what I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, okay, so our last question, this has to do sort of with the state of the world. Um, this. Um, Lighthouse yeah. member is oh, God. this lighthouse <laughs> member is wondering. Um, do you think are there any sorts of signs um, as an agent that you've seen um, as far as how things are changing in the publishing industry because of the pandemic? Is there any sign that anybody is, or that you know we're all reading more? Um, or I I think just the general question of what changes have you seen in the last couple months, if any at all? Yeah. Um... I don't know. It's it's tricky. Like this is definitely something that we ourselves, like you know, at the agency, are talking about all the time. Like, are people still reading? What are they reading? Should I, you know, be going out with my pandemic book? Should I not be going out with my pandemic book? Um, I I think you know our kind of general consensus is that people are still reading. Um, it I think their taste might have changed slightly. Um, it's, you know, hard to say definitively, but like definitely you're hearing of, you know, people going for more classics or like the books that were on their kind of, you know, bucket lists of things to read. Um, I think some of the political nonfiction that was doing really well before the pandemic hit, um, you know, has, has the appetite for that has waned a little bit. Um, it, 
it kind of just feels like in some ways just sort of like publishing can be a very cyclical business. So you'll go through trends where people are reading, you know, a lot of thrillers or for a while it was, you know, all the vampire romances or things like that. And then they sort of fade out um, or the dystopian stories and then they kind of fade out for a few years and come back in. So I think the pandemic in some ways is just kind of, you know, uh, perhaps a less gradual change in the cycle of what people are reading. It, from what we've kind of talked about here, it definitely feels like, you know, lighter, more escapist, but for different people, escapist means different things. It could be a really light romance. It could be, you know, some kind of psychological thriller. Um, I, I, I think it's just sort of, um, everybody's kind of gone to their comfort place or sort of the fundamental of like, if I'm interested in this kind of book, I'm, I'm, you know, zooming in on kind of that sort of thing. Like maybe now is not the time to expand my horizons. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. See you later. All right. Take care.